Let's look at a specific equilibrium, water liquid and water gas. Now, here I have water liquid and water gas at about 25 degrees C, and they're in equilibrium. There's a little bit of vapor above this liquid. We could write a reaction quotient for this, and when we do, that reaction quotient is the pressure of H2O. That's because the liquid water is pure liquid water, and pure liquids and solids do not appear in equilibrium expressions. So products over reactants, products is the partial pressure of the gas, the reactants are liquid water, but it's a pure liquid, so that doesn't appear in the equilibrium expression. So this reaction quotient is just equivalent to the partial pressure of the gaseous water. Now, that's the vapor pressure of water. When this is in equilibrium, that will become the vapor pressure. So the vapor pressure is the equilibrium constant. So in this special case of evaporation, or the liquid gas equilibrium, equilibrium constants are equal to equilibrium vapor pressures. And we could find those equilibrium vapor pressures. You could look at a PV diagram, and you could say, well, at a specific temperature, that's the vapor pressure of gaseous water. Notice here I've plotted several different temperatures for this gas. So as the temperature increases, the vapor pressure increases, and you can see that. The vapor pressure is a function of temperature, and we know K, the equilibrium constant, is a function of temperature. So that makes good sense. Now, let's look at the exact value, 0.03 atmospheres at 25 degrees C is the value of the vapor pressure for water at 25 degrees C. So that's the value of the equilibrium constant for this equilibrium. We could also find that on a pressure temperature diagram, a phase diagram. We could look at 25 degrees C and read off the vapor pressure. We would go to 25 degrees C, come up to the liquid gas equilibrium line, that's when they're in equilibrium, and read the temperature and the vapor pressure right off this plot. Now, equilibria depend on the direction you write them. If I write the reaction quotient for this in the reverse direction, now the reaction quotient is 1 over the vapor pressure, the partial pressure of water. And that's in general true. If you reverse a chemical reaction, you take the reciprocal of the reaction uh, quotient and the reciprocal of the equilibrium constant. So in this case, we'd have the equilibrium constant K prime is 1 over K for this forward reaction that we've been talking about. So equilibrium expressions, when we write Qs and Ks, we omit pure liquids and solids. In these physical equilibria, vapor pressure and K are equivalent, and they are functions of temperature that we already stand. If we reverse a reaction, we invert the equilibrium constant. Those are the properties of Q and K.